Good morning and thank you for joining us on All the Press and Plus TV Africa. I am Benny Ark and good morning. And joining me this morning for review and analysis of the headlines from our national dailies, I have with me Anuhi V. Ayeni. Thank you for joining us, social analyst. Good morning. Thank and you also Dr. John Mark Bala still joins us this morning on All the Press. Thank you, John, Doctor, for staying still thank with you for us. Having me. And we'll go quickly into the headlines this morning from the Punch newspaper. Will compel Togo others to pay electricity debts, says the TCN. Interesting story right there. And billionaires leads Dangote loses $2.5 billion in one month. CBN suspends sale of Forex to BDCs. Reps take delivery of exotic cars, begin distribution. Hmm. Federal government searches for 4,370 contacts as cases hit 65, says COVID-19 cases, explosion, community transmission imminent. NMA attacks government, asks president to issue executive order on lockdown. And six of Lagos' 12 new cases arrived in Nigeria by sea, Abuja, Bauchi at two. Akil Dolu, Dewi Sule, deputy test negative, fire me at West Awesh Resorts. And still in the punch this morning, um, eight men arraigned for chasing four cows to death. <laughs> Lagos Assembly reinstates suspended lawmakers and 27 cases recorded as Lassa fever ravages Kogi. Traders flee as security agents enforce Oshun, Oshun market ban. Man steals seven cars at redemption camp, sells in Anambra. And last in the punch this morning, NECO sends 89 staff to ICPC for certificate forgery. Interesting um, headlines on the punch this morning. Reps take delivery of exotic cars, begin distribution. Let, let's start with that. I mean, at such a time in our nation, um, well, still, still, it sounds like good news and a reason for jubilation, isn't it? I mean, let's, I know, Evie, I need, I need your reaction to this. It's sad. My reaction <laughs> is sad. It's sad that they're taking deliveries of cars and yes. distributing, and it's on the front page of newspapers. Yes. When people are thinking of how to feed their families, and people are thinking of how to stay safe, they're thinking about exotic cars. Exotic cars are nothing without human beings. Mm -hmm. People are trying to live their lives. They're talking about driving cars. Dr. John, what does this, what, what sense of responsibility does this um, impose on our, on our leaders, um, given the times we're in? Well, it's good that we're even aware that it happened. If yes. they have distributed without letting us know, we wouldn't have known that. I, and it seems it's something that's already been thought of much earlier Before now, and purchased. Yes. So we didn't uh, trash it then, so I think we should handle it in a different way. However, I would have, I wouldn't expect the, the, um, Minister of Information to be telling us how he is receiving 100,000 masks. That is trash. It's nothing. Yes. He will have, in together with this vehicle, so say, population of I know over, I'm over receiving, 200 million people. I know I'm receiving these new cars. Also, give me 10 million masks. Yeah. That's what I expect to hear from yes. him because he's already purchased this and we didn't trash it then. That's okay. But why didn't he act and said, I need ventilators? I need masks, I need special beds, I need disinfectants, I need, you know, some antiviral medication that in combination with hydrochloroquine, I can help those that might have complications. Now That's tell us, doctor, are, are you, so far, would you, how would you call the federal government in its reaction to, to the spread of COVID-19 in their preparedness and preventive measures they, they put it in place? The coordination was only what started from Lagos. There was no proper coordination at the top. Yeah. So I don't even have any right to how I would score them, maybe 2 over 10. And then for Lagos State governor, Government? I can give them 9 over 10. Interesting. Federal government searches for 4,370 contact cases as um, diagnosed cases hit 65. Should we be afraid? That's a, that's a big question. I think so. 4,370 <laughs> search for cases. How, how did this elude us? How did this, how did this happen? Dr. John? This, this, this is expected, as I said earlier, if you multiply 65 by, by 5, it's a similar number you're going to get. And remember, these are people, assuming someone is actually diagnosed positive after flying in an aircraft. So you look at the passengers likely to be 100. They might want to trace all those people. Doesn't mean all of them will be positive. So, but I don't understand why they're saying searching. Is it people that had contact with some in the community, in town, or those from, because those that came in by air, 
uh, they should easily uh, have the contact because they were taking the form, they were filling forms and keeping their contacts and addresses. Those should be easier. Maybe these are those, these are among those that were maybe had a contact with uh, at Ikiti, Ogun, and some few cases that yes. have traveled out of the state. Or maybe they attended a big festival and the, the records because from now from one of the one of the one of the news clips was actually the fact that some of these people they travel and the addresses that they gave some gave were wrong addresses so it was it was not easy to trace um, those addresses yes which is the, which is the reason why I say it is sad again and just like you said it's not defined 4370 from where 4,370 from which state, what part of the country? Yes, we can say we're scared and everything, but until we'll, we know, we don't know what to be afraid of. So we just keep on to the rules of what has been said, the social distancing and the washing of hands. Now, now it's, it was reported in New York so that, that the, the, the six of Lagos, 12 new cases arrived in Nigeria by sea. And, and one would wonder, at, at this point, shouldn't every of our entry point be on lockdown? Um, for, for the sea vessels, it's much easier because um, coming by sea is not a routine mode of transportation for passengers. Yes. It's, most, it's mostly cargoes that we receive. So it's easy. You just, just, once you bring in a cargo, you shouldn't leave the port. You should remain because they have a recommendation within the vessel. So they drop the, ve the cargo and move back to where they're coming from. And if they, if, if they are ill, we have the owners to assist and manage. But that means this test will be carried on right at the ship uh, on the vessel and confirm that. Okay. And now we're also we hearing that the, the NMA is attacking the government and asking the president to issue executive order on lockdown. Anu Huvi. On lockdown, yes. yes. Because when the government issues executive order, then everything is as a halt. There is no movement back and forth. Nobody says they have the rights to do this, and then they can enforce that lockdown. Yeah, but are we and ready for this? Are we ready for a total lockdown? I mean, uh, honestly, when it, when uh, it's think about the poor with us, people who cannot even fend for themselves, their daily, their daily livelihood comes from what they do daily from hand to mouth. I'm, I'm personally, I would not want Nigeria to go on a lockdown. Okay. But looking at it as a, as a social issue, as an interaction issue, for example, now the headline says 4,370 from where? We still don't know where they are from, and we still don't know the kind of interactions that we have with one another when we rub around ourselves, and we, are and we feel relaxed that everything is okay. You could be, and, and an analysis was given to me this morning. You, we could come into a room and touch it. And before you know it, you are doing this, and then you are touching your face. So without knowing instinctively, the things you do normally actually could create a problem. And some of these people that have it, maybe that is how they got it. So if the NMA is asking for a lockdown, honestly, I applaud it because then the more we stay away, the easier it is for this thing not to spread. Now, Dr. Dr. John, can you confirm to us the authenticity of the, of the research, research that's being conducted pr to prove that you know, this virus can actually be airborne? Can you, can you authenticate yes, the research? Yes, the, the, uh, it, it coming from from different countries, uh, they've made observations that it can suspend in the air for some time. Mm. So that sh short momentary period, I can't remember exactly how many seconds or minutes, but it can suspend in the air. So even if it is between 30 seconds to a couple yeah. of minutes, it's an issue. But because of this nature is heavier, it tends to drop. It drops and it doesn't go further than one meter. 1.2 meter there about. That's why the social distances advise a, a point of a couple of meters or 1.8. Right. Let's get to the Nation newspaper this morning. The first headline in the Nation Osoba, don't blackmail our envoy to UK and CBN private sector coalition to raise 120 billion naira. Chinese club woos a gallo with 400,000 pounds a week. And Nigeria in lockdown, state short borders at COVID-19 case rises to 65. Akeo Dolu, Diri, Aribishola, or Basaki, Sule, test negative. And robbery suspect arrested after stealing seven cars at RCCG camp. Um, not so much of headlines this morning in the nation newspaper. And lastly, Lagos Assembly leaves suspension on four members and bail for Kalu's aid is still um, the shutdown, Nigeria in lockdown, state short borders as COVID-19 cases rises to 65. Now, there's still many states in Nigeria that have not confirmed yes. any case of this. Um, what is pertinent for them to do at this point in time? 
We have to start by, first of all, shutting down the movement out of the states that have positive cases to try to protect those ones that are free so that they can supply us with stuff, food, medication, so we can now set up a system on how to receive them and how to manage their entry, either get them at the border, pass it on, or use some existing supermarkets that have some control or use our voting system like the electoral system whereby we know the zones and the areas that people are and supply certain food. That's the best thing. If we don't lock down now, the virus will spread and lock us down. And, and do you think we've seen the worst of this virus as it is right now, globally? I I I'm praying that we've seen the worst of it and then now from here we can manage it. Yes. Because if this thing goes further than this, I tell you the truth, no matter what anyone says, this is something that humanity is not really built to handle. I don't care where it is coming from. Everybody can say this is okay, that is okay, but they are all temporary things until we know the long-term effect of what is being done now. Every single medication is still on trial until after some time when we know exactly what is going on. So I pray that the worst of it is now, we are facing it now, and then we can contain everything that is happening now and start getting people well. Because in the midst of even the increasing numbers, we still have, we still hear that some people are still recovering from this. Okay, what have they done to make them recover? I asked a friend, I was speaking to a friend of mine yesterday, I said, China is very big on uh, herbal, herbal tea, herbal, what are, what are the things that they have done? And she said a doctor had informed her that they use some herbal remedies. So those herbal remedies, export them out to other people, let them use it. We get the China tea, we get China um, remedies and everything. Until we actually know the long-term effect of this with all the drugs that have been done on people, I'm praying, that's my prayer, that this is the worst of it. Mm. This is the worst of it within the next few days. After this month, by the grace of God, no more. Please, let this thing be contained. The world is not ready to contain everything. If the world shuts down, we are not ready for it. We cannot handle it. I don't care what any nation says. Dying is dying. And when people start to die in mass, it's not a matter of people are making money out of it um, anymore. And I pray by the grace of God that does not happen. Praying by the grace of God, why we do what it is we need to, <laughs> to do, do also to protect yes. ourselves. Yes. And let's go to the Guardian newspaper this morning in the Guardian, CBN private sector form committee over COVID-19 crisis. Labor seeks payment of salaries to sustain stay-at-home order. Now, this is very critical. Lagos markets go on partial lockdown, and coronavirus victims rise to 65 as rivers or your record first confirmed cases. Shortage of food looms over COVID-19 lockdown. Federal government moves to avoid overcrowding and isolation centers. Now, I'm, I'm particularly concerned about the, the state of the welfare in most of our IDP camps. Early on in our extended news, we did have um, someone from one of the IDPs, the coordinator of one of the IDP camps, and he did narrate what their challenges are. And I feel personally that IDP camps are one of the highly volatile places where there could be massive spread of this virus if there's any confirmed outbreak. Yes. What is critical for them to do, doctor? You, you, you were here when he was talking yes. earlier. Yes, it's, it, it's, it's sad, really. Um, we need to come out and support each other. Um, for the, uh, what we need to do for the IDK camp camps is to set up a system whereby to restrict uh, indiscriminate entry into uh, these areas, uh, into the camps, because uh, once it gets in, like you rightly said, yeah. then it will go out of hand. So the best thing is to stop it from coming in. But then we have to come out and support, provide support. Individuals, corporate organizations, some private businessmen have to come out. Remember, it's not all in IDP camps. We have uh, homeless, uh, uh, sorry, motherless babies yes. as well. Some of the charity homes, we need to help them. We need to help people in the hospital. We need to help even those volunteering to take care of those with the COVID-19 disease. Yeah because some are not even healthcare workers under salary, on salary. They're just volunteering to assist. So we need to come in in full force, no matter how little. It can be food, it can be material. If you produce, if you're a company that produce Indomie, give them some Indomie. If you're the company that produce uh, or you have a farm, assist them with something because it's gonna be really a mess uh, if we don't stand for one another.
All right. And I think these are times yes, when we can use our churches, our mosques, and our schools. We can use them as contact centers. Like you said, if you produce in domain, give in domain. In every state, there's somebody that's producing one food or the other. So many people are making water. Make water available, make food available, take them to churches, take them to mosques, take them to, and let people come out in as volunteers to hand out these things to other people. One of the great strengths of things like this is the volunteering. Is it so that we can get, get people engaged mentally. Yeah. You can get them engaged physically because staying at home is not what is going to resolve it. Remember, we have cases of there's no light. We have cases of um, there's no food. This is running out. But when you get people engaged, yes, I know there's social distancing, but still, we can still have social distancing even in helping one another. So I think it would be nice to call the churches, to call the mosques, to call the schools. Let people come out, volunteer. I would like to come out, volunteer, and help in sharing out and helping one another to get through this. Uh, Labor is seeking a payment of salaries to sustain stay-at-home order, just in case That's there's good. an eventual lockdown. Um, do, is our system ready to, to cater to those who might not be working and who might not be able to fend for themselves, knowing? Uh, Why not? We should. We borrow money to do stuff, yes. uh, wrong stuff. We borrow money to build stadium. We borrow money to yes. conduct elections and stuff like that. So why not? This is just for about a month or two. It's not more than that. If we're able to lock down now, within a month we'll have an idea how many people are infected yes. because the incubation period is just a few days. So the second leg, and then we now follow the system to contain the spread, because it's going to continue. Mm. What other countries that had and passed through, like China now they're trying to do, is to avoid second wave. Because if you lock down for too long and you open up, you're still going to get the, the, the heat from uh, uh, the virus, because people will still travel somehow. So you only lock down to, to adjust and then set yourself to respond properly. So that if we get infections, we're not going to get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 at once. Yeah. We're going to get it gradually, gradually, and then hopefully slow down the process until we get vaccine yeah. or get definitive management. And who will be your And I think if the, gov if the government actually then say to what he is saying, it makes people feel as if the government is actually doing something. Because we are looking at the headlines, oh, the government action, the government, what exactly is the government doing? Are they giving people free water? Are they giving them free sanitizers? Are they giving them free masks? We have not seen any one of these. It's now time for us to be, make everybody know that, look, you are not alone. You are not alone. Social distancing does not mean you are my enemy. You are not my enemy. I still love you. I can still reach out to you. No matter how far, I can still reach out to you. I'm still there and everything. Let government do things to make people realize that we are not alone as a people. I see people going to ATM to withdraw money all the time. Soon there will be no money to withdraw. And when there is nothing to buy, what are you withdrawing money for? You can't eat money, but you can eat food. So like he said, make the food available. Let the manufacturers of Indomie make more Indomie. Make Indomie available. Make water available. Let there be food, clothing, and shelter ready for people when they need it so that we can feel that we are people together fighting this thing together, right. not that we are separated. All right, Doctor, and just your professional opinion, just want to advise people out there still on what they should be up to date with, bring them abreast on what they need to do still, you know, for every one of us to, to help curtail and stop the spread of this virus. One first and foremost is uh, up your game in hygiene, general hygiene, and especially hand hygiene. Uh, wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Make sure you use soap. Don't just wash it, wash it with ordinary water because the soap will help to take off the dirt and also um, wash off any possible contamination if it's virus uh, that you have. And then the, follow the etiquette of, uh, observe the etiquette of. Uh, uh, respiratory, uh, any symptom that you have. Maybe you want to sneeze or cough, you cough through the elbow. If you're wearing a short sleeve, you cough on your shoulder. And then uh, social distancing, like we mentioned earlier, is key. We have to maintain, if you're not sure of um, the, the person that is sitting by you, try to step aside and give about two meters or check your height. If you're not sure how to measure, just look at it almost to your height yeah. or your height plus a little bit, then you stay away from the person. If someone sneezes near you or sneezing repeatedly or coughing, if you, if you have your mask and you have an extra hand over politely, say, would you like to have one? Um, then it will help to protect other people around. And then like someone mentioned earlier um, on the street uh, interview that the buses are taking more than recommended, like one person. I think they should also follow that. That is key because 
Right now, people still have to move a little bit until they are settled down to know what, what the trend we are having. Looking at the 4,000 people we are searching all over the place, we don't know where they are. So um, we need to take extra measure. Um, overreacting is better than underreacting. Okay, then by way of immune booster? Um, well, the one that we know that's not harmful is uh, vitamin C. Okay. I mean, it's um, even high doses have very minimal effect. Most likely, you just pass some loose stool, that's it. But not any serious side effect on heart or blood pressure uh, or sight, like chloroquine has uh, lots of side effects, and okay. one has to be careful. People shouldn't take it indiscriminately. If they have it, they should. Uh, they can keep it and maybe if healthcare people or somebody, they, they have issue, then they advise because you don't know how long going to take the chloroquine. If you stay for two months or one year, you're going to lose your sight or have, have heart problem. Yes. Part of its harmful yes. effects, side effects. Yes. yes. And Uhivi, any, any last thoughts this morning as, as we wrap up um, of the press? Well, as we keep safe, please, you can reach out to one another by phone, by text. Hello, how are you? Are you, are you okay? At, are you at home? Are you with the family? Do you need help with anything? If a 5,000 can help somebody there or 10,000 or even if it is rice or whatever can help somebody, let's reach out to one another. Reach out to the next person. Let's not be alone at this time and you, myself, my, alone. Let's still reach out to one another. Even with the safe distancing and, um, and all that, that, we can still reach out to one another. It's not a time of loneliness. It's a time of togetherness. Thoughts, in thoughts, in action that we can do for one another. And me, Hubi Ayeni, thank you very much for joining us and all the press. And also Dr. John Magbala, thank you very much for staying with us and thank for your you contribution. Family. And that's all we can take this morning on Off the Press. Join us same time next week. My name is Benny Ark and this is Plus TV Africa.